The tiny state of Israel has become world famous for its extraordinary achievements in so many fields. Jewish immigrants from all over the world returned to their homeland, revived its barren wilderness, rebuilt its ruins and revitalized their ancient language, creating an economic, military, social, cultural and technological power marveled at the world over. Amazingly, these achievements were all clearly foretold by our biblical prophets who described them so vividly. Let's briefly look at the fulfillment of 10 remarkable prophecies which are all a living reality in Israel today. And He will gather you in from all the nations to which the Lord your God has scattered you. Perhaps the greatest miracle of all, an unparalleled return to a land of epic proportions. Listen to this. In 1840, there were 6,000 Jews living in the land of Israel. By the time of the Balfour Declaration in 1917, the number grew to 60,000. When the state was declared in 1948, there were 600,000. And today, over 6 million, 6.7 million Jews. The Jewish population of the land climbed from being a tiny fraction of 1% of world Jewry to 6% in 1948, to almost half of all the Jews in the world today. This miraculous ingathering is perhaps a greater miracle than the exodus from Egypt itself in three different ways. Firstly, the exodus came after 200 years of slavery, whereas the return to modern Israel happened after 2,000 years. Secondly, all the Israelites came out of one country, Egypt, whereas in the modern era, from over 100 countries. And thirdly, in Egypt, all Jews lived in one culturally segregated ghetto in Goshen, speaking only Hebrew. Whereas in Israel today, Jews have returned from every possible cultural and ideological background, speaking over 80 languages, somehow all forged into one functional society. An incredible miracle in human history. I will make the land desolate and your adversaries who dwell in it will be desolate too. Following the Roman conquest of 70 CE, the Jews went into exile. Thereafter, the land of Israel was conquered by 14 different empires over 1900 years. But as the Lord had foretold, the land would remain barren to its conquerors despite repeated attempts to make it flourish, as if the land itself was waiting for the return of her children. In 1867, Mark Twain famously described the land he saw, a desolation, repulsive and dreary, with hardly a tree or shrub anywhere, a land covered in sackcloth and ashes. Until, of course, the return of the Jews. But you, O mountains of Israel, give forth your branches and bear your fruits for my people Israel, for they are soon to come. As the Jewish people has returned to the land, the land has somehow returned to them. The desert has become an oasis and the desolation a blessing. Israel very quickly started developing world-class agricultural expertise and cutting-edge water conservation technologies despite the dry climate and vast arid lands. The returning Jews planted over 250 million trees and Israel is the only nation on earth that entered the 21st century with more trees than it had 100 years before. It's more than 300 wineries and its grapes, olives and citrus fruit production are exported the world over. And if you think that is remarkable, listen to this. For then I will make the nations change to speak one clear language. At the time that the first pioneers began returning to the land, the Hebrew language itself was not a spoken language. No Jewish community and not one Jewish family spoke to their children in Hebrew. Hebrew was a language of prayer and scholarship, but not a spoken language as it had been in biblical times. Herzl, with all his great vision for a return to Zion, did not believe that Hebrew could be revived. He believed that German and Yiddish would be the spoken language. Miraculously, Hebrew has become the lingua franca in Israel, spoken by 10 million people the world over, and is the only language in recorded history to have been revived by a people as their spoken language. And of course, Hebrew is the language of the Torah itself. For out of Zion shall go forth Torah, and the word of God from Jerusalem. In the early years of the state, you could fit all yeshiva students in Israel into one small hall. At the zenith of Lithuanian Jewry, there were no more than 3,000 people learning Torah full time. In Israel today, there are close to 200,000 men and women engaged fully in Torah learning of all worldviews, traditional yeshivot, yeshivot hezder, midrashot mechinot and more. There are more people learning Torah in Israel today 
than arguably at any other time in all of Jewish history. And he will do good to you and make you more numerous than your forefathers. If the Jewish population in Israel has increased 10 times since 1948, its economy has grown 40 times. According to The Economist, Israel has doubled its GDP in the past decade alone, a world record. Recently, Israel's GDP surpassed both France and Great Britain, and according to Bloomberg, Israel's economic stability ranks third in the world. But when it comes to the cows, we rank number one. And he gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The average Israeli cow produces 12,000 liters of milk per year. This is the highest in the world, more than countries such as the United States and Holland, which are renowned for their dairy production. Even the cows in Israel are holy. Honey refers to the date honey, and the large sweet dates from the Jordan Valley are amongst the finest in the world. Jerusalem will be settled beyond her walls because of the multitude of people. Jerusalem, the beating heart of Israel. For centuries, the city was off limit to Jews. The prophet envisioned Jerusalem's population growing so large that its walls would not accommodate the inhabitants. Until recently, this seemed impossible. In 1860, Jews began moving beyond the walls, and Jerusalem today is home to over 900,000 inhabitants, 600,000 Jews, the largest city in Israel today. And all nations on earth will be blessed through you. Despite the tiny size of Israel, there is almost no significant technological advancement which takes place today without Israel's know-how and expertise. Global advancements in sciences, medicine, agriculture and high-tech have Israel's fingerprints all over them. Jews the world over have won Nobel Prizes in an array of fields disproportionate to any other people. And 12 Israelis have won Nobel Prizes, more than China, despite it being 150 times larger than Israel's population. Israel has the largest concentration of startups per capita anywhere in the world and has been dubbed the startup nation and by others the innovation nation, ensuring that its innovations are a source of blessing to all of humanity. Nations will see your righteousness and all the kings your honor. The development of Israel's foreign relations during the last 30 years is staggering. The number of countries that have diplomatic relations with Israel has doubled from 80 to 160. Recently, the Abraham Accords with some of Israel's Arab neighbors broke barriers previously seemed impossible, and somehow Israel has been able to turn sworn foes into friends. Israel's achievements in and of themselves are staggering, whether it be in the realm of science or the spirit, technology or Torah, nation building or universal blessing. For example, many countries are looking to learn from Israel's success, being the first country to vaccinate the entire adult population against COVID-19. Even more astounding is that the destiny of this country seems less about politics and more about prophecy. Not just a new phenomenon, but rather a reincarnation of an ancient one, a modern saga clearly foretold by the biblical seers of old who saw the story of Israel as a central piece of the fulfillment of human history and our collective destiny.